Ladies and gentlemen, the time is now 1400. Good afternoon and welcome, honored guests, to the change of command of the world's finest naval air station, Tuxent River. Traditions and customs have been associated with military since the Middle Ages. Naval traditions, customs, and ceremonies give immeasurable value to individual achievements and honor the patriotic service of those who have made a career of defending our nation. The change of command ceremony you will witness today is prescribed by Article 1253 of the U.S. Navy Regulations. Customs has established this ceremony to be formal and impressive, designed to strengthen the respect for the authority of which is vital to any military organization. The heart of this ceremony is the formal reading of official orders by the commanding officer. Command passes as the incoming CO says, I relieve you. And the off-going CO being relieved responds, I stand relieved. Guests, please rise for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the presentation of colors, the playing of our national anthem, and the invocation. Captain, United States Navy, arriving. Naval Air Station, Patuxent River, arriving. Naval District, Washington, arriving. Advance the colors. Retire the colors. Care of us uh, there. Then we followed on with an absolute phenomenal day, uh, watching uh, almost everything that's flown near Pax River uh, in the air tower. We saw Triton. We saw Joint Strike Fighter doing hover operations, helos. Uh, we saw F-35, F-18s. Uh, it was absolutely phenomenal, and, and the funny thing is, my cousin looked over and she says, they're doing all this for you. <laughs> yeah, so I, that's about what I said. I said, you know, I have a lot of authority over a lot of things, but that's not one of them. It was a great work being done by NAVAIR. Uh, I would like to welcome our distinguished guest, 
elected officials and their staffs, flag officers, senior executive services, uh, tenant leaders, family and friends. It is great to have you here with us today. I would like to ask, uh, have a special welcome to Admiral Abbott and his wife Marjorie. Uh, I know you and I go way back, mainly because of our father's time together. Sir, I see you in the crowd. I like to do that at quarters. I'll do that here. Uh, our fathers being old friends in Mobile. So, sir, it's great that you're here. I thank you for your leadership of maybe Marine Corps Relief Society. I know, and I know you know, that we are in great hands under the director, uh, Maureen Farrell, and all her dedicated volunteers. And I see you all sitting together, so it's great to see you. I would also like to take a moment to thank those who made this ceremony possible, as always. Well done to our highly professional and sharp NAS color group. You serve all changes of command throughout our installation. You make me proud when I see your professionalism and exacting precision in which you perform your patriotic duties. Thank you very much to Petty Officers Brown, Falsetti, Phillips, and Airman Henry. Well done. Thank you to the Navy Band. It's great that you're here. I appreciate your musical expertise and the way you are able to make those instruments sing, sparking all our patriotism, and especially when you sit, when you play the national anthem. Thank you. Our handpicked side boys, I want to recognize all of you by name. Our bosun and our bell ringer, MA1 Mercado, AC1 Sanchez, AC1 Powers, NC1 Horn, AC1 Bennett, AWS Curric, HM1 Tran, MA2 Wilson, BM2 Plank, and ABH2 Flores Caravantes. I want you to know you have all impressed me my entire tour here, and I thank you for exhibiting the excellence that I always talk about in my priorities. Chief Susan and Chief Strange, thank you for participating in my retirement ceremony. The way you read Old Glory and the Watch is simply inspiring. The Chief's mess embodies honor, courage, and commitment of our naval service. I thank you for your deck plate of our, of our sailors, deck plate leadership. To the flag detail that you will see shortly, Lieutenant J.G. Gus Murray, Lieutenant Rob Files, Lieutenant Mark Stanfield, Lieutenant Commander Sue Beckman, and Commander Molly Boron, your engaged leadership, professional competence, and dedicated care of your sailors and civilians is a true hallmark of a naval officer. I thank you, and I would also like to thank Lieutenant Coughlin for his coordination of all of our static displays here. This entire ceremony is a combined effort of so many people working together and coordinating this event. Thank you specifically to Lieutenant Bethany Harrison for her leadership and oversight of this entire ceremony. I do realize, and as does XO, you do have a day job and you're probably running around right now looking for you. Um, but we appreciate all your hard work. Thank you very much. To, to Commander Terry Wise, thank you for letting us use your hangar here at VXS-1. I would like to say the aircraft looks great. Thank you for the use of the bird. And it means a lot for me to have this ceremony here and retire in the home of where I had command of the Warlocks when we moved in here. I was in command when we put those great words, uh, Warlock Country, on that uh, wall there. So it's great to be here. You lead them well, and you continually make me proud of the Warlocks and to be a Warlock. Thank you also to HX-21 and VX-20 for the use of your C-12 and the MH-60 that you see before you today. Now, to introduce my boss. It gives me great pleasure to introduce our guest speaker today, Rear Admiral Yancey Lindsay. As the Commandant of Naval District Washington, he serves as our Regional Commander and the 89th Commandant of Naval District Washington, which is also the ceremonial quarterdeck of the Navy. He has led at every level of command to include an E2C operational squadron, VAW-117, the Wall Bangers where that squadron learned, earned the Battle League while deployed in support of Operation Iraqi Freedom. He was also the commanding officer of Naval Base Coronado, which consists of a consortium of eight installations. It is undoubtedly the largest in the Navy installations command enterprise. And 
as a CEO of ACE, I can surely appreciate the responsibility he had there. As a CEO serving in his region, he epitomizes the boss we all desire to work for. Incredibly approachable, highly knowledgeable, highly supportive, and always providing top cover for sometimes some very difficult issues. He allows us the freedom to lead our organizations while also providing us stick and rudder. And I will tell you, he is one amongst the best bosses I have ever worked for. Ladies and gentlemen, my boss, Rear Admiral Nancy Lindsay, Commandant Naval District, Washington. Welcome and kind introduction. I really appreciate that. You were, uh, I don't know, sometimes when you listen to, listen to that, I go, who the heck is that? It's not me. Well, I have to say, admirals don't necessarily take orders from captains, but Heidi, Heidi did have one request of me today, and so since it's kind of her day, I thought I'd oblige her this one time. War Eagle. instantly feel the weight of command. 
and over time he may take on a slightly hunched over posture with a look of intense determination on his face. With the mantle of command on his shoulders, I think that's when we'll really see how that knee is, is, is healing. So today is special because it's the Naval Air Station Patuxent River Change of Command. However, it's even more special as Captain Heidi Fleming's retirement ceremony. Today, Heidi concludes 27 years of service to our nation, to our Navy and our nation. Heidi, you truly are a Renaissance woman. Reading her biography, I couldn't help but be reminded of that Dos Equis beer commercial. You've seen it, the one with the most interesting man in the world. I think Heidi could be the most interesting woman in the world. Is there any way you could work into your remarks later a, hey, stay thirsty, my friends, for us? <laughs> okay, thank you. That'd be great. From Heidi's beginnings at the U.S. Naval Academy, she's had a remarkable and rewarding career. From flying combat and support missions over Afghanistan, Bosnia, Kosovo, and other places we can't mention here, to critical research, development, testing, and evaluation flights. She's fought battles in the halls of Congress and the Pentagon, and also on the volleyball court as a player in inter-service and in, 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 in international competition, where she earned a silver medal in an armed, surface, armed services military tournament. She also was the head coach of the Naval Academy women's volleyball team. All of this preparing her for command at the squadron level, as she mentioned here, and finally, to commanding what could argue, arguably be the most important installation in naval aviation. In command here at Pax River, she did. She has expertly led this outstanding group of men and women you see in formation behind you through some challenging times and events over the past 19 months. A couple of examples. They've been able to keep multi-billion dollar aircraft procurement and test programs on schedule while executing critical runway and airfield repairs. They flawlessly supported and facilitated over 83,000 air operations across 6,800 square miles of congested airspace at two separate airfields. The search and rescue unit here just passed a difficult inspection with flying colors. The team behind you has worked tirelessly to care for and improve quality of life and facilitate operations for Pax River tenants and residents. From airfield operations to ambulances, from traffic control to child care, and from plug toilets to leaky roofs, they've done it all at all hours of the day and night, 24-7, 365 days a year, for their Herculean efforts and remarkable performance would you please join me in a round of applause for these fine men and women standing behind us. Thank you. Oh, and did I mention they've earned retention excellent awards each of the past two years. Absolutely remarkable, well done. Heidi's leadership also extended beyond the fence line. Her team volunteered over 7,000 hours last year to local schools, the Special Olympics, Habitat for Humanity, and elsewhere. In addition, many of them are the Little League coaches, the volunteer firemen, and the Girl Scout troop leaders you see in your community. In fact, Pax River's efforts were recently recognized by two Navy Community Service flagship awards. Of course, much, much of what Pax River has done for their community under Heidi's leadership couldn't have happened without close partnership with local community leadership and members. It's great to see so many of you here today in support of Heidi and this installation. You understand the importance of the air station to our Navy and to our nation and to this community. Thank you for your support of Pax River and your willingness to work with us to maintain the air station's viability in a dynamic and challenging environment. Heidi, thank you for everything you've done. We're going to miss having you as our shipmate. Your shipmates here were kind enough to provide me with some of the things that they'll miss the most, so I thought I'd share them with our audience this morning. Is that okay? Okay. Gutsy move. 
One thing they'll miss is hearing the word phenomenal used over and over and over. I think it's just phenomenal that you use phenomenal on a phenomenally, incredibly regular occurrence. That's, that's pretty impressive and phenomenal. Uh, another thing they'll miss is, I'm so cool. Actually, Heidi and I have that in common. I was born and raised in Arizona, and I get cold easily. So I, I feel you there, especially in our Navy, these Navy, uh, old Navy buildings. I think they're, they're also going to miss the commanding officer wearing a flight suit to quarters while everyone else had to be in service dress. <laughs> now, Scott, we'll see if you continue that most inappropriate habit. But seriously, Heidi, throughout your career, you made places better. You made people better. You had impact, you accomplished the mission, you took care of people, and you made a difference for our Navy and for our nation. You will be missed. I'd share what Heidi plans to do for her next career, but she hasn't decided yet. Her current plan is to spend some quality time with family and friends and enjoy a little downtime. Certainly heard. However, I do know one thing. Whatever Heidi ends up doing in her next career, she will be absolutely outstanding and incredibly successful at it. That's just who she is. That's just what she does. Heidi, we, and that includes my wife Stacy, who couldn't be here today, wish you all the best. You have done great things, and the Navy and nation are better for your service. Congratulations on a job well done, and fair winds and following seas shipping. Please join me here so we can formally recognize you. Grandma Lindsay, Commandant Naval District Washington, will now present the Legion of Merit to Captain Fleming in recognition of her honorable and faithful service to our country. Guests, please rise for the reading of the citation. The President of the United States takes pleasure in presenting the Legion of Merit to Captain Heidi A. Fleming, United States Navy. Her service is set forth in the following citation. For exceptional meritorious conduct in the performance of outstanding service as Commanding Officer, Naval Air Station, Patuxent River, Maryland, from September 2014 to April 2016. Demonstrating superior leadership, Captain Fleming maintained and enhanced the Navy's premier research and development facility for naval aviation and reinforced local community cooperation and the long-term viability of the air station. Through robust community partnerships and extraordinary vision, she skillfully mitigated encroachment, enhanced safety, and ensured security for three fence lines supporting over 25,000 personnel. Her proactive engagement enabled tenant commands to safely conduct 82,619 flight hours and accomplish $2.9 billion in aviation evaluation missions. Exercising meticulous oversight of 173 base improvement projects, totaling $121 million, she facilitated momentous improvements in the quality of life for personnel who work at the Naval Air Station Patuxent River and the families who reside on the installation. Furthermore, her initiatives elevated workforce morale and sailor retention rates, resulting in her command receiving both the 2014 and 2015 Retention Excellence Awards. Her superior performance of duty is the hallmark of a career devoted to accomplishing broad and diverse tasks, which spans 27 years of honorable and dedicated naval service. By her dynamic direction, keen judgment, and loyal devotion to duty, Captain Fleming reflected great credit upon herself and upheld the high traditions of the United States Naval Service. For the President, D.R. Smith, Vice Admiral, United States Navy, Commander, Naval Installations Command. Yes, please be seated. Let me lower this. And I haven't quite turned over the burden of command, so I can't reach that there. 
It also reminds me of all my years playing volleyball when all my teams, as a setter, I'd always say, I don't know what you guys are talking about. I'm just as tall as you. And then I saw the pictures of me standing next to six foot players, realizing I was really only five. So I get that. Admiral Lindsay, thank you very much for your kind words and sharing this day with us. As I said before, distinguished guests, elected leaders, flag officers, senior executive service, fellow installation CEOs, tenant leaders, family and friends, thank you very much for sharing this day with us. It is a very special day for me and my XO, Captain Scott Starkey, as we turn over command the world's finest air station and I retire from the world's finest Navy. As I look to this end of tour award, I will always be reminded of what the PACS team accomplished together. This is just as much yours as it is mine. Always remember that, and I thank you for your support. Many people have asked me today if I will get emotional. To that, I will say, if Peyton Manning, after 18 years in the NFL, can get a little emotional, I think I can get a little emotional after 27 years in the Navy. Now, if I do reach an emotional impasse, you might hear an audible and hear Omaha, Omaha for one more time. And if it gets really bad, you might just hear a war eagle. I guarantee that'll fix it. When I was selected for Major Shore Command and slated to NAS Pax River, I was excited to come back home where the future of naval aviation began. The incredible mission of Naval Air Station, Texas River, is where all research, development, test, and evaluation for all of Naval Aviation happens. Every aircraft the Navy and Marine Corps team fly today are maintained, tested, and developed here. During my tour, the PACS pros have enabled over $5.9 billion worth of research and development for Naval Aviation as we provide the technological warfighting edge to our Navy and nation. NAS Pax River, as we know, is located in beautiful St. Mary's County, where the Patuxent River meets the Chesapeake Bay. Rich in history and natural beauty, this peninsula provided a perfect setting for what we do. During the commissioning ceremony, Rear Admiral John S. McCain as Chief of Navy's Bureau of Aeronautics said, our service has commissioned many naval air stations, but one, never one, with the possibilities of such far-reaching importance as Naval Air Station, Patuxent River. I believe those words still hold true today. As a community, we enjoy incredible support for the local, from the local elected officials, phenomenal school systems, and to all the individuals who reside in St. Mary's and Coward County. As a priority that I have of people and partnerships, I will say it has been an absolute pleasure to work and represent NAS Pax River to our local community. You have supported our mission at Pax as we have worked together to minimize encroachment, promote multiple partnerships, through our numerous leadership and community boards. I won't name them all, but there are many. While you also support and help our active duty and civilian families. It is truly a welcoming community, and we are so fortunate to be a part of it. Our main mission here supports the tremendously talented workforce of Naval Air Systems Command, Naval Air Warfare, Center Aircraft Division, known as GOP, AD. The expertise of the workforce has accomplished previously unthinkable technological advances. They've demonstrated the ability to land and take off unmanned assets off a carrier, plus aerial refuel of the same asset, the X-47. All of that happened while I was here. They have developed in their flying, which we got to see the day today, the fifth generation fighter, the Joint Strike Fighter. They have established the P-8 Alpha Poseidon as a follow-on to the venerable P-3, my beloved platform that you see behind you, the H-60 Romeo and Sierra, the Presidential Hilo, E-2D, Triton, just to name a few. 
I will say Navier in Nog AD's leadership has been phenomenal. I did see Admiral Peters here. Thank you for coming today, sir, and Admiral Gahagan, who just took over. Thank you very much for being here. Uh, I appreciate your support for working alongside uh, to help you run the mission. I will also say it's been a pleasure working with the Navier Vice Commander, Admiral Slack Morley. I see you there, Spanky. Uh, it was great to work with you in your new capacity. Congrat congratulations on FLAG. I think I just saw your new slate, so congratulations on that as well. However, I will tell you it's not just those two large tenant commands that we have here. We have over 50 tenant commands, all of which are accomplishing critical missions for the safety and security of our nation. To the tenant command CEOs, XOs, and CMCs, I see many of you out, here, out there today, you have been absolutely great to work with. As we lean forward to support you in your respective missions, I thank you for your engaged leadership, active communication, and solid teamwork. I appreciate what you do every day, and you are all part of the NAS Pax River Legacy. Under the Naval District Washington, I would like to thank and acknowledge the great support we received from Admiral Lindsay and his dedicated region staff, along with the friendship and fellowship of my fellow installation commanders. We know what it's like to be the man in the, the arena, and I thank you for your friendship. I would also like to acknowledge the former uh, NAS Pax River CEOs, Chevy, I see you. Lynn, I see you. I know many of you are out there today, so I thank you for the legacy, your legacy, and I thank you for the leadership of leading Pax River to where it is today. And I hope I made you proud by my service. Having been able to serve this talented Pax team, I leave extremely grateful for the opportunity to have led such a dedicated and hardworking group of professionals. We all know them, the Pax pros. Remember what we have accomplished together, despite constrained resources and sometimes limited manpower. I want you to always be proud. While I could recount the larger accomplishments we have attained together, I want you to know what is the daily work you do to keep the small city running smoothly, which sets you apart. Often, the unsung heroes enabling the mission of naval aviation, you perform your daily duties with steadfast dedication, mission focus, and determined perseverance. I am routinely awestruck by what you accomplish sometimes with so little. It will be my daily interactions with you that I will surely miss the most. Some of the highlights of the daily ones are as such. Our Friday morning AM5 walk down, led by Airfield Facilities Division with the PAX team. We've often been out there doing our fog walk downs and stopping to stand at attention for colors on runway 32 while Triton takes off on the crossing runway. It doesn't get any better than that. I was always full of pride standing shoulder and shoulder with you. Being in the ATC tower, just like we were today, as you handled multiple aircraft on the field and in the pattern on a gorgeous day, that was today, like it was many. You are truly Varsity League. Riding in Port Ops boats as they support our talented search and rescue team. Doing their SAR jumps. I still don't understand jumping out of a perfectly good aircraft, but you guys make it look easy. Your professionalism is top notch, and that is evidenced by your many, many inspections that you have absolutely knocked out of the park. Guard mounts. Standing gate guard duty, yes, we stood gate guard duty with our committed police force. Rain, sleet, snow, they ensure our fence lines remain safe and secure every single day. Don't ever forget to thank someone when you come through the gate for what they do. Our fire and emergency services, they respond to multiple emergencies on the air station and with mutual aid out in our community. You have saved several lives during my tour here while also limiting damage to our facilities by your fire response. You volunteer in the same capacity with our community, and I want to thank you for always running to the crisis to protect us all. 
Fleet and Family Support Center in Chaps. Thank you for responding several times after hours, supporting those in need during tragic times. Thank you for the care you provide to our past crews. You help them heal every day by what you do. Our Child Development Center providers care for your children like they are their, they are their, their own. They love them, they take care of them, and I've told them before, they have a harder, harder job than I do. And I commend them for their service. I've enjoyed our Ombudsman Assembly and those who volunteer to help be that key communication link with our families. I'd also like to say thank you to Anna Stanfield for being our dedicated Ombudsman. I'll always remember my multiple community engagements. I've always enjoyed friendship and camaraderie out of town. The Veterans Day parades are always a highlight. I got to do a couple of those. Trust me, it is always an honor when I get to represent NAS Pax River to our local community. I've enjoyed kicking off numerous NWR events. Opportunities you provide weekly, daily, just to make our off-duty lives better. I thank you for your dedication to us. I have gotten the opportunity to fly with numeral, numerous squadrons here. I have flown C C-12s, P-3s, P-8s, C-130s, just to name a few. I would also like to thank our pilots for teaching this NFO how to fly. I enjoyed watching the Joint Strike Fighter tank along with the F-18s while I was flying in the C-130. I will tell you the proficiency and skill in which you fly is truly the hallmark of naval aviation. The pride I felt when being asked to re-enlist our sailors. What an honor it was to read you the oath and have you to continue your service. Frocking our sailors, giving Pax River COBZs, and recognizing our dedicated active duty and civilians who make in a flight suit. <laughs> Not always. Uh, making Pax River what it is every single day. And of course, shaking everyone's hands and quarters. Always know that you are undoubtedly the heart and soul of Pax River, the world's finest naval intersection. To our Chiefs Mess, you're a phenomenal group. I want you guys to look over and see that air traffic control tower. That was my farewell gift from the Chiefs Mess. It is absolutely a sight to behold. Thank you very much for that. Chiefs Mess is often the foundation of any naval organization. Ours is no different. Your deck plate leadership and mentorship have led to unprecedented retention wars just like the Admiral mentioned. Also, we've had above average advancement of all our sailors. CMC, thank you for your leadership and dedication to our sailors and their programs, and the sage advice you always provided to the front office. I'd like to give a shout out to Mike Quigley. I know you're cringing back there, I see you. Uh, thank you, Mike. You were always a part of the quad. I will tell you from my days here as a young XO and CEO of the squadron to now, I thank you for the depth of your knowledge of Pax River and the advice you provided me both as XO and CEO. I wish you and Lynn all the best as you retire in this coming summer. Thank you. The criticality of maintaining a 73-year-old installation while keeping aircraft testing going is not without its challenges. Our NES Pax River Public Works Officer, Commander Alex Moore, Alex, I see you sitting there, and our Air Officer, Commander Tony Rojas, and his predecessors, Commander Pearson and Commander McHugh, you all show te technical expertise, outstanding leadership, and coordination, and we've seen it most recently in the coordination of our complex $22 million Phase 1 runway project. I realize that's only one of many on your plate. You make it look easy. Your dedication and hard work of you and your staffs have made both mine and the EXO's job easy. I thank you for that. During my professional affairs tour with Navy and OSD, I would like to say those were phenomenal tours. <laughs> with phenomenally talented people. Uh, I, I have a few of you here today, Andy, 
John, I know John Barth had to step out at the last minute, but uh, I really enjoyed those times working together on the hill, doing some heavy lifting sometimes, uh, taking some first aid phone calls, but we worked well together and we were a true team. I thank you for being here. Uh, we had dedicated active duty civilians and congressional staffers who we learned a tremendous amount from. I had a tremendous uh, command tour here at VXS-1. I enjoyed my first tour with VR-22, VP-40, and 45. To my fellow VP-45 department heads out there, so much of my success during that tour was due to the incredibly strong teamwork of a very talented group. I think most of us even went on to command, which is pretty phenomenal. Reggie, Brent, Trey, JC, Craig, you became my Navy brothers. Thank you for your friendship and the camaraderie we shared. We made a great team. We worked hard because we also had a great front office. Skipper Helmer, I see you. Thank you for being here. And thank you for letting the horses run. As you used to say, uh, it was a great, great tour. To my former CEOs who are here, Captain Rich Lewis was my first skipper when I was in St. Fleming. It is an honor that you're here, as well as Skipper Helma. I want you to know, my, my former CEOs and mentors, you know I would not be here today without your support, leadership, and guidance. Then and throughout my career, thank you so much for the success that I've enjoyed because it is your success as well. Chevy, it was a blessing to be your XO. Yours and Cheryl's friendship were solidified during our time here at Patch River. You're a fine exa example of leadership. Thank you for your mentorship and friendship. XO? XO's blood knows I love to talk. He's like, I'm never going to get to take over. long-winded, sorry, but it is my retirement day, so it's a little uh, XO, I want to thank you for your loyalty, steadfast dedication, and teamwork. I am incredibly thankful that the Navy slated you as my XO. You're a phenomenal leader who has unquestionable integrity and character. Scott, while I didn't know you prior to coming to PAX, I will say that you and Kathleen have become great friends. I know that Pax River will be in very talented hands with your leadership and guidance. Thank you for everything, and I look forward to seeing you lead NAS Pax River to the next level of excellence. I'd also Officer, Naval Air Station, Patuxent River. Well, start up. well, I'll start with I just made it through the hardest part of the ceremony. I made it up and down the steps, didn't fall down, so I'm very happy about that. Even with the extra weight out. Admiral Lindsay, thank you for coming. It's a lot to have you guests speak today. Thank you, honored guests, friends, family for sharing this day with us. As is customary, I will keep my brief remark. My remark, Mark's brief, rather. 
But first, Captain Fleming, I thank you for your leadership, guidance, and friendship over the last 18 months. The PACS team you have built will continue to perform remarkably well into the future. Captain Hammond, Reggie, welcome aboard. It's great to have you and your family, Julie, Julia, Jada, and Jonah, here on the PACS team. I would also echo Captain Fleming's appreciation for all those that helped put this ceremony together. It takes a lot of work. I will mention by name, Lieutenant Harrison, thank you again for leading the charge. You brought it all together, and uh, tomorrow you go back to flying Hilo. I would not be here today without tons of support throughout my career. There are a few of those people, many people here, that I would like to recognize. Starting from college, Rick and Doug, I see you out there. Uh, it means a lot that you're able to come down today. Thank you very much. Go Hokies! For my first fleet tour, I see some Desert Ducks out there from HC2. Thank you for coming, Tim, you, Al. Appreciate it. I also see some Tridents of HS3 out there in HSC9. Thanks for coming, Skipper Fitz, Skipper B.I.L. Chuck and Yazi, right in feet. Moving on to my family. My father and mother-in-law are here. Thanks, Fred, Carol, for coming. I appreciate it. Kathleen's sister, Andrea, is here as well with her three boys. You see them in the front there, Mark, Aaron, and Luke. It's great to have you all here. Thank you. I also see my Aunt Susie out there, my cousin Jimmy. I think my cousin Kyle may have made it. Uh, thank you for coming. I'm not sure we're going to have to go a little audible here because the seating got a little messed up, so I'll tell you what to do. Mom and Dad, you're over here on this side. So my mom, the flowers that are not roses, if you could deliver those, please. Here's a lot that you came today. My mom raised four boys. She has the patience of a saint. And I think just a little bit of that may have rubbed off on me. Uh, and it, it has helped me throughout my career. So thank you, Mom. That's it. Thank you. Dad, you were responsible for teaching me a work ethic and getting the job done. I would not be here today without your efforts. So thank you very much. We'll do the audible. For my stepdaughter, Haley, who's over on this side. Keep coming. <laughs> Come on as well, we'll get it done now. <laughs> That's my stepdaughter Haley with the boy on her lap. And my wife Kathleen, who you know, you just saw up there a minute ago. To my boys, Matthew and Michael, pay attention. You amaze me every day, and I can't wait to see what you will do next. Matthew talks about flying jets, uh, but at least Michael wants to fly as he calls them, helicopters. That was until last week and he started talking about construction, so I got some work to do there. I'll try to work on that. Haley, you've become quite the volleyball player. I look forward to seeing where you will go to college. Go Hokies! And, and. <laughs> Kathleen, you're the love of my life. I am the luckiest man alive to have you in my life. I will not be able to do this job without your support. I love you. Community partners, tenant, tenant, and region leadership. Thank you for your support during my time as XO. We look forward to continuing outstanding installation support so we may carry on with the business of naval aviation and the development of the future of naval aviation. And finally to the PAX team, it's my honor to be your commanding officer. Do not expect a big change in the way we will do business. Captain Fleming and I are very aligned. I will, however, provide you three areas to focus on. The first should sound very familiar. It is respect. We will continue to treat everyone with dignity and respect, focus on outstanding customer service, and be professional at all times. When all else fails, follow the golden rule. The second focus is ownership. This is our Naval Air Station, and we will strive to improve it each day. The third area is excellence. Excellence is not perfection. We will make mistakes, but we must learn from those mistakes and get a little better each day. 
Alrighty, I think I got enough. Go Hokies! So I went with all orders, policies, and instructions remaining in effect. Ladies and gentlemen. Following naval custom, we will now conduct a presentation of our nation's flag, Captain Fleming, in honor of her retirement after 27 years of honorable, loyal, and faithful service. Flag ceremony detail, post.
still have to stop all engines, lay about smartly, and drop anchor to pay homage to one of our shipmates going ashore. To honor the years served, the guidance, the leadership, the friendship, and the expertise that this shipmate has freely given these for 27 years. For 27 years, this sailor stood the watch. While some of us were in our bunks at night, this sailor stood the watch. While some of us were in school learning our trade, this shipmate stood the watch. Yes, even before some of us were born into this world, this shipmate stood the watch. In those years when the storm clouds of war were seen brewing on the horizon of history, the shipmate stood the watch. Many times she would cast an eye ashore and see her family standing there, needing her guidance and help, needing that hand to hold during those hard times. But she still stood the watch. She stood the watch for 27 years. She stood the watch so that we, our families, and our fellow countrymen could sleep soundly in safety each and every night, knowing that a sailor stood the watch. Today, we are here to say, shipmate, the watch stands relieved. Relieved by those you have led, guided, and trained. Captain, Fle Ca Captain Fleming, you stand relieved. We have the watch. Guests, please rise for the benediction and remain standing for the final piping ashore of Captain Fleming. Let's pray. Holy God, as we depart this place, wherever we go, how we drive, how we talk with one another, even the emails that we send and guide us in the steps of your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. May we choose to be friendly and generous toward one another. And give us steadfast hearts, which no unworthy thought can drag it downward, unconquered hearts, which no tribulation can wear out, upright hearts, which no unworthy purpose may lead into darkness. Your way is good and abundant in peace and the pathway of success. Pray your blessing upon Captain Fleming as he retires for NAS Max River. In your holy name I pray, amen. We'll now request permission to go ashore. Navy, retired, departing. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's ceremony. Captain Starkey and Captain Fleming and their families, thank you for taking part in this time-honored ceremony. They invite you to stay and enjoy a reception catered by the River's Edge Conference and Catering Center. Aircraft and installation vehicles are on display and you are welcome to meet the PAX professionals who are staying invited to tell you about their missions.